Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Stand Up Speakeasy. I am Srethne. I'm your host. And every single episode, I bring a comic from the Central Time Zone, and hopefully, I'll branch out to the other time zones. And I, and I interview comics from different parts of the country. So, with that being said, my guest today is from New York, but he currently re- resides in Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, Anthony Fuentes. How are you, Anthony? How are you? I'm doing fantastic, brother. How you? How you doing? You doing good? Yep, I'm doing fantastic. Thank oh, you for man. being my yeah. guest. Um, Hey, show. you well you wearing a you, you wearing a Wu Tang hat. You already won me, bro. You wearing a Wu Tang hat. You already won me over. Awesome. I love them. They're like <laughs> my favorite group. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's one of this a classic group, bro. 36 Chambers. That's one of my favorite rap groups of all time. Most definitely. I got hooked on to them after the Wu Tang Forever album, and I was just man, I was like, man, this album is just it's a double LP and it's just fantastic. It's just I love yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, it is, yeah, it is. Don't yeah. make them like that no more. Nope, absolutely not, for sure. And Anthony, um, so you're from New York. What was it like growing up in New York? Uh, I grew up in the 80s, 90s New York. You know, you know, everybody was uh, hanging out in the neighborhood, playing crate ball, stick ball. We used to play Scully. It's a game you used to play where you grab milk caps and you melt the crayon and the wax falls in the cap and you let it get hard again, like solid, and you, you skip it, you flick it, and it's got to get to certain squares. And, and we used to play in the neighborhood from sun up to sun down. Uh, it was rough. You know, I grew up in Brooklyn in the Bushwick. Shout out to all my Bushwick people. Bushwick, baby, all day, every day. Um, but, you know, there was there was unity. You know, the, the block always looked out for the block. Everybody looked out for each other. Everybody took care of each other. Used to have block parties. Now you go through my neighborhood and it looks like a ghost town. All these kids are playing PlayStation all day. Or, you know, they don't go outside no more. Uh, but it was an experience, man. You know, uh, you know, uh, Frank Sinatra said it best. If you can make it there, you can make it anywhere. So, you know, now I'm in Chicago making it. So, there you go. There's proof in the pudding. Indeed, absolutely. And did you start doing stand-up in New York or in Chicago? Believe it or not, I started doing stand-up in Chicago. I, I, moved, here for, I moved here from New York uh, about 10 years ago. And uh, my nephew actually went with his date to a comedy show. And I messaged him and I was like, yo, find out how I could, you know, become a comedian. Can I, can I do stand-up? Can I do an open mic? Whatever it takes. Um when I was younger, as a kid, my mother, I, she'd have company, and I'd always be trying to do little jokes and stuff, and my mother would always tell people, either he's going to be a lawyer or a comedian. So her words came into futrition. You know, I started doing open mics at the Laugh Factory. Everywhere they had an open mic, I would go. And then uh, from there, you know, I just kept, you know, repetition, man, hard work, dedication, blood, sweat, and tears, giving your all. And, uh, you know, luckily I'm here now. You know, this is where I've been since, and I've been doing comedy. I've got to see, you know, meet some great people, see some really cool places. So it's been a really good experience. Indeed, most definitely. And what are some of your favorite places that you got to perform at, um, either in Chicago or the rest of the country? Or uh, I have to say, obviously, Laugh Factory. I've done the Laugh Factory. Uh, my favorite place to perform was Joe's on Weed. The first guy who ever gave me an opportunity was Michael Kendo. Uh, he does the Mike Yo shows in Chicago. Um, I would send uh, footage of my open mic sets to producers all over. And uh, he gave me my first guest spot and um, I would take classes, anything I could do to, you know, better my craft and get better at what I'm doing. And, uh, you know, again, met good people cause you know, comedians look out for one another, kind of give each other advice and help each other along the way. And uh, I'd have to say though, my favorite spot was Joe's on Wheat Street. It's in Chicago and Laugh Factor are my favorites. But I, I recently performed in Vegas on December 26th. That was fun too. Awesome. That's the day before my birthday, so it's it's a. Uh, you was born on Jesus' birthday. I a day after. I well, like the twenty seventh of December. So. Oh, get it's, out it's, of uh, here! There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was nice. I got to go to Vegas. It was different, you know, like because of COVID, everything's like shut down a lot, you know. So the streets are empty. The strip is not packed. Um, I did two shows at the Red Palms. Uh, and you know it was just weird, you know. Like I went to the hotel. I asked the concierge, like. You know, is there any shows? Not really. Not no shows. He's like, well, you can go to this place. I'm like, man, just show me where there is to eat. That's what I am. I'm a big guy. Just point me in the right direction where I can get some food. And um, I got to go to the donut bar. That was amazing. I had a donut with Oreo in it. And uh, it sucked, though, because after the show, my first night, I was only there for two days. I walked by the Bellagio because I wanted to take pictures of the fountain. There was no fountain. There, there was no fountain there. <laughs> it wasn't going on. They had it off. I was like, go figure. The one time I'm here, it's 40 degrees outside. It's not hot. You know, the streets are empty. There's no fountain. I'm like, geez, this figures. This is how it would be. But the shows went great, though. It was a real good time. That crowd was lit. They were fun. They were a lot of fun. Awesome. 
And uh, two days in Las Vegas is enough for me too. So it's just like it's the perfect amount, and then just awesome stuff. Most yeah, definitely. yeah. And Anthony, I, I noticed like on um your Facebook pic- uh, picture, like on your your fan page, you had a photo with Michael Rappaport in your cover photo. Uh, how did you meet Michael Rappaport? I actually got to work with Michael Rappaport back last year, February. Uh, that was actually a cool experience, man, because I'm a huge fan of Michael Rappaport. Uh, uh, someone let me know he needed a New Yorker, and I reached out to him. I was like, you know what? What, what do you got to lose? So I reached out and sent him a message. I'm like, yo, you want a New Yorker, fat, funny guy from New York? I'm your guy. I sent him a clip, and I got an opportunity to work with him at the Chicago Theater. That was, man, that was a blessing. That was a really good opportunity for me. Um, nicest guy, really humble, really down to earth, really cool guy. Um, I love how he... Uh, talks about sports like I do, so it was really cool talking to another New York Knicks fan, because he feels my pain. You know, we're Knicks fans, and, you know, the Knicks, as you can see, are sorry, so it was nice. It was a really cool experience. I was giddy. I was like a little girl, but I just couldn't show it. I didn't want to show him that. <laughs> Indeed, most definitely. I love his rants on, on social media. They, they crack me oh, up. Yeah. And- oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And definitely. I love I love the Knicks, too, and I love uh, the Nuggets, because I'm, like, from Colorado, so, like, oh. the whole Carmelo Anthony connection is just, like, and why I love the Knicks too. So, yeah, that was our little glimmer of hope when he first went to New York. We were all excited. We had a whole big video montage for him when he played the first game, and then he played good one year, and then after that, it just it was just horrible. After that, the season just went down drain, down the drain, and we've been there ever since. <laughs> Indeed. Hopefully, in due time, everything will be like the glory days of Patrick Ewing and John Starks and stuff. Hey, from your lips to God's ears. Hopefully. <laughs> Indeed, most definitely. And so with this next portion, Anthony, um, I'd like to ask you the, these questions that I ask all the comedians I've ever interviewed um, through the past couple of years. And uh, so with that being said, Anthony, um, what are your uh, what inspired you to perform stand up comedy? Um, you know, uh, I always loved comedy as a kid. Um, the first comedy I snuck off to, to hear was my father had a, a, a record of. George Carlin, Seven Dirty Words You Don't See on Television or, or the Radio. I watch, I listened to it uh, when he wasn't home, obviously. And um, I just fell in love. I watched Eddie Murphy. I watched uh, Red Fox. I watched all these guys. And I just loved, I always loved making people laugh. I was always the clown. I was just a clown in school. I was always a clown in around at home. Um, when I went to the Army, uh, when I graduated basic, uh, they asked, the drill sergeants asked, you know, who could do the best impressions of us? And I was good at doing impressions of them. So everybody's like, Fuentes, Fuentes. So I got to perform graduation night in front of all the parents and all that. And I had them dying. That sounds like, man, I really love that moment. Like that moment was the best moment in the army. And I fought in Iraq and Afghanistan. Go figure. That was the best part of it was that moment. Um, but when I was overseas, when I was in Iraq, I had a sergeant, Atkins, and he'd always tell me, like, hey, Fuentes, come here. Tell me a joke, man. Anytime we felt down or whatnot. And, you know, I'd always crack jokes. So it was always in my blood. I always wanted to do it. Um, the reason I ended up looking to do it is because I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder. Um, when I moved to Chicago, I finally uh, realized that I needed to find help. Um, talked to a therapist, and she started going over, like, what do you like to do for hobbies? Well, I like to joke. That's what I like to do. So she told me, find an open mic. So that's when my nephew went with his girlfriend. I reached out to him. I got the open mic. And the first open mic I did uh, was three minutes long. I talked like the fast guy. You ever watch? You ever remember the commercials back in the day of Micro Machines? Yep. When the guy would talk like a million miles an hour, that's how I did my set. Yep. And uh, But I knew that's what I wanted to do. The moment I got off the stage, I was like, this is what I need. This is me. This is who I am. And this is what I want to do. And uh, I fell in love with comedy. That's when I deeply fell in love with comedy. And I just started working and working, writing all the time, constantly writing. And everything I would see, I'd talk about it. Oh, this and that. You know, this comedian is doing this. You should watch this. You should watch. And I watched a lot of the guys coming up in Chicago because, you know, those were my kind of mentors because they've been in the game. They they know how to do the jokes that, you know, Abby Sanchez, Joey Villa Gomez, uh, Vince Acevedo, Alex Ortiz, all these guys, I watched them and I learned from them, you know, I would, you know, okay, cool. I see what they do with this joke, how to, you know, pause for this punchline and, you know, little by little, you know, just working on your craft, man. But I love comedy. I mean, what better job to have than to bring people the gift of laughter. That's how I see it. Most definitely. Indeed. And what was mm-hmm. it feeling like when you first performed stand up? 
I was nervous as shit. Excuse my French, but I was nervous. I was very nervous. Uh, I went with a buddy of mine from New York. He's my 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 best Jewish friend. I call him my best Jewish friend. That's my best Jewish friend, Ari. And um, he just kept trying to pet me up. He's like a little Joe Pesci, but Jewish. So like on the way there, he's like small and short, but he acts like a chihuahua. You know, he barks like crazy. He can bite somebody, but he don't. And he's all like, oh, man, if somebody boos, I'm going to tell them, you know, I'm going to tell them to go F themselves. And don't worry, I'm like, yo, relax, man. But after I saw a couple guys go up, I was like, you know what? I got this. I know I'm funnier than this guy. I know I could do better than this. And once I was on stage, it was like it was an adrenaline rush. You know, I didn't the other nervous went away. It was just like an adrenaline that I felt. And I just that feeling, I still get it to this day. Every time I go on stage, it's just that rush. Indeed, most definitely. And you spoke of George Carlin early, and I want to know what your other favorite co- uh, comedy specials and comedy record albums are. I'm sorry? Uh, we, we, you spoke of George Carlin earlier, and I want to know what yeah. your other favorite comedy specials and comedy record albums are. Oh, man. Uh, what do you mean? Like other albums that I've listened to, like comedian-wise? Yeah. Oh, man. I love, I love, uh, uh, man, there's a lot. I love John Pennelli. I love, um, George Carlin, Red Fox, Eddie Murphy's another favorite of mine. Um, Chris Rock, I used to love. I love Chris Rock's older stuff. Um, I love uh, Burt Kaiser. It's really funny. I think he's really good. Uh, and I also love Sebastian Maniscalco is another good one. So, you know, all those, I love a lot of comedians. I, I, I'm very versatile. I love Ralphie May because probably because we're the same size. I don't know. But I love Ralphie May. May he rest in peace. I love... Um, uh, Gabriel Iglesias is pretty funny. I often get compared to him because I'm fat. So anytime I tell people I'm a comedian and they see him fat, they're like, oh, like Fluffy. I'm like, yeah, yeah, like Fluffy. Yeah. <laughs> and I love uh, Ralphie made too. Like, have you seen his like comedy class at the comedy store? Yeah, of course. Oh, man, that was like such a fantastic thing that he did. And I learned so I, well, I go back to it all the time and watch it. It's just fantastic. Yeah. You know, that's why I love comedians that push the envelope. I, you know, I love Dave Chappelle because they push the envelope. You know, the problem is nowadays a lot of comedians have to apologize for the jokes. And I don't think you should apologize for a joke because that's killing comedy. Um, you know, a comedian's job is to say what you're thinking, but you just don't want to say, you know, which makes it funny. So, you know, our, our job is to push the envelope. That's we we're. F- some freaking evil bastards we really are we're assholes you know that's what our job is to be because we're normally like that um but you know that i you know it's I, those guys i like because those are the guys i see they push the envelope they're not afraid to say something that they feel is funny and that's what makes them great most definitely i dig it for sure and i'm known as the cleanest dirtiest comic in daytona beach because i say all these dirty things without saying a curse word and so there it's you like go. It's- it's so much fun down there. It's like they just love it. Like they eat it all up. It's fantastic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I tried that a couple times. I could do clean sets. You know, I, I don't mind doing clean sets because a lot of places I started when I did open mics, they were you had to do five minutes of clean mute material. Um, but if I could, if I could go all out and do me, then I'd rather do that because then I'm not so cautious. I don't gotta worry about oh man, I don't want to say the wrong thing. You know. Indeed, most definitely. And Anthony, a couple of those guys have been on TV and film, and I want to know what your favorite sitcom sketch shows and comedy films are. Ooh, that's a hard one. Sitcom? What was the other two? Uh, sketch shows and comedy films. Sketch shows and comedy films. Oof, man, that's a hard one. Believe it or not, I'm going to really throw people off with this one, but my favorite TV show right now, as of lately, because I just finally watched it, was The Big Bang Theory. That shit is hilarious. Um... As far as comedy sketch, Dave Chappelle, man. I mean, he's a, he's he's the one that started that. Like, you know, I mean, Saturday Night Live, Saturday Night Live started, but Dave Chappelle took it to another level. Um, I love Key and Peele, but Dave Chappelle, he's a pioneer of that. Um, as far as uh, comedy movies, oh, boy, that's hard. There's a lot of greats out there. And if I had to say one that really I like that's old school one is Planes, Trains, and Automobiles with John Candy. Indeed, excellent choices for sure. And let's see here, if you can go on tour with any comedian locally and internationally known, which comedians would you like to go on tour with? Hmm. Only because I got to work with a Michael Rappaport, and I would have to say uh, Dave Chappelle. Who wouldn't, right? I mean, that's like a dream. Who wouldn't want to go with Dave Chappelle on the boom? Except for right now, because he got COVID. I ain't trying to go nowhere with him right now. He can stay his happy ass at home, but... Without COVID, definitely Dave Chappelle or Michael Rappaport. 
indeed most definitely and um if you can get roasted by five comedians past and present which comedians would like to get roasted by Ooh, five yep um i'd have to say red fox red fox really revolutionized richard pryor um to me, really revolutionized. And it's not even that they revolutionized comedy. It's also because what they did, what they had to go through to become successful comedians. You know, it's a lot easier now, even though it is, it is really hard now, but because of social media, it's a lot easier. But back then, you didn't have that with racial tensions and all that. Those guys paved the way for a lot of other minorities like myself and other comedians, Eddie Murphy, Arsenio Hall, you know, uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, you know, uh, D.L. Hughley, Steve Harvey, Bernie Mac, all, all those guys, it, they had the way paid for them because of Richard Pryor and Red Fox and these guys, you know? So um, I'd say Red Fox, Richard Pryor, uh, Bernie Mac, Dave Chappelle, and uh, hmm, that's a hard one. I'm going to go with George Carlin. I'm going to say those five because George Carlin was another one that used to push the envelope and didn't give it, didn't give a damn what you thought. Um, but out of all of them, to me, the greatest joke teller has got to be Dave Chappelle. Indeed, most definitely. He has me hanging on all like every single word, so he's a good storyteller yeah, for sure. Definitely. And um, where do you see your comedy journey in the next five years? Um, you know, sky's the limit, man. It's all about hard work and hustle. I tell everybody, this don't come easy. You gotta work hard for it. you. Gotta hustle. Uh, with the COVID coming and all this pandemic shit going on, it was hard. You know, they closed everything down. A lot of us were just stuck. Like, what do I do with myself? So when they first reopened in Chicago, I started reaching out to places. Can I do a show here? Can I do a show here? Does anybody, anybody that had a stage, let me do a show. Um, you know, that's my mentality now. I, I believe never say no, always say yes. And, and work as hard as you can because the sky's the limit if you do that. So my goal is hopefully in the next five years, who knows? Maybe be on Comedy Central. Maybe doing a Netflix special, God willing. Indeed, most definitely. I wish you all the best because you deserve it. Thank you, it. brother. I thank you, thank you. Energy. You're welcome, Anthony. And um, which other forms of comedy would you like to venture off into, like improv, sketch, comedy writing, acting, directing, etc.? Uh, I love acting because, you know what I'm saying, I lie to my girl a lot, so I, I'm good at acting. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, yeah, I like, I like acting. I would say acting, directing, you know, I, I feel like. The good thing about this with comedians is, you know, a lot of us are, are multi-talented. You know, we have different gifts. Um, I can play instruments. I can, you know, I love acting. I love directing. I want to see, I feel like a comedian, sometimes they get to this zone where they're like, I'm successful in stand-up. That's it. And it shouldn't be that way. You should be able to venture out and learn all the in and outs of entertainment industry. You know, I'm producing shows. I've produced shows. I've, you know, booked comedians myself, you know, and because I want to learn the ins and outs, you know, and that's how you learn, you know. Um, so I've done my own shows. I've been booked for shows. So, you know, it's all about learning everything. You know, I want to learn how to direct one day. I want to learn how, you know, to act, you know, because the sky's the limit. If you got, if you love the entertainment industry, you got to learn that there's other aspects that you have to reach out, other fans that you have to reach out to. Most definitely. Indeed. And um, what is your favorite joke a comic has ever written? Ho, 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 ho. Oh, man. There's a few. Let me think my favorite. Man, that's a good question. Um, man. You know what? If I had to pick my funniest bit that a comedian did... Does that have to be famous, local? Don't matter? Don't matter. Okay, then I'm going to go with, uh, I got two. I got one, my boy Abby Sanchez does a bit that I love about watching, you know, porno and then the screen times out and you make eye contact with yourself and you start to think to yourself, like, what am I doing with my life? It's 2.30 in the afternoon. I thought that's a hilarious bit. And um, my other favorite bit, oof, I would have to say, would be actually, I really like Burt Kreiser. I love the the machine story he does. I don't know if you ever heard of it. You know, he studied Russian for four years. I love the beginning, how he starts it. I love his segues into the end. I love that set. That bit right there is a hilarious joke that I love. Indeed, most definitely. I'll have to check that out for sure. And definitely. um, and let's see here if um, 
uh, are there any um uh, 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 um, as as this show is is like um, you nominate comics that um, are my future, future guests as on my show. That's how you get into the standard speakies as you were nominated before for somebody, and um, so it's like a secret society of comics, stand up comics. Mm-hmm. It's like uh, the prohibition all over again, the the roaring twenties. So with that being said, Anthony, uh, which comics in Chicago or New York or wherever would you like to see on a future episode of the Stand Up Speakeasy? Uh, I'd love to see Vince Acevedo. I'd love to see Manny Acosta. I think those guys and Zach Orion, those three guys, I've worked with them several t- uh, for a few, a couple years now, and they're very funny guys. Very great, great funny comedians. Indeed, most definitely. I'll have to reach out to them and all that good stuff. And and I definitely. hope, uh, and um, hopefully, um, I'll need your help with the spelling of their names and all that good stuff. And most and definitely. I put, and I put uh, your information scrolling on the bottom there, and um, on um, and uh, your Facebook and Instagram, and hopefully um, you get a lot of likes and uh, followers that way. And um, and I put it in the description box below too, so you can just click on it on that good stuff. Definitely, so. yeah. Or yeah. just tell them to look for a guy who looks like Fat Joe, but <laughs> just broke. <laughs> <laughs> So, Anthony, are there any kind of words you like to give out to the audience watching at home? Man, yeah, you know what? I, I do. With all this chaos going on in the world, everybody mad at each other, everybody in the uprise. You know what? Laugh. Remember to laugh. I say that every day when I post something. Remember to laugh because sometimes we forget that and we become angry and anger turns to hate. Hate turns to resentment. Just remember to laugh. And sometimes if you just take a moment to laugh, all the hate, all the anger, all the BS going on in the world goes away. So just remember to laugh. That's my only farewell words for everybody. Absolutely. And thank you so much, Anthony, for being my guest today. And it means the world to me. And I look forward to... Thanks for going- having me. You're welcome. And I'll be in Chicago in October for our festival and then catching the Candyman premiere because that's my favorite movie. I'm going to see how they reimagined oh, yeah. it. So that'd be awesome. Nice, so, nice. With that being said, Anthony, thank you so much again for being my guest. And I look forward to meeting you in Chicago when I go out and visit in October. You as well. Make sure you're wearing that beanie cap when you get out. I will. Absolutely. You got it. All right, brother. Be safe. Peace and blessings. Peace and blessings to you, too, and be safe. And wear a mask 